everyone, it's Keely here for Soy and Shane. Thank you so much for joining me. Now today I'm going to be making a loaf of soap using some coconut rain fragrance oil from Aroma. It's got notes of coconut water, agave nectar, cyclamen and a yang ylang, and it's all in a base of rosewood and sandalwood. It does have 0.1% vanillin, but I'm not too bothered about that because we'll be able to combat any discolouring with a bit of titanium dioxide. Now I've had the fragrance oil in my stash for a little while and when I first smelt it I knew immediately how I wanted this soap to look and I had a few ideas of how to actually achieve the look but I was trying to work out a way of doing it that wasn't as labour intensive as it was going to be. Now if you've been following along with me for a little while you'll know that usually I don't plan out my soap so I kind of go on the fly and do what the... Um, the soap batter is telling me to do and if I can get my design idea into it I do. Well this year I did decide I was going to start drawing down some of my soap ideas and if I kept to them I kept to them and if I didn't I wasn't going to be too upset about it. But I did draw down my coconut rain. I haven't yet coloured it in but you can see along the bottom here all these little dots are meant to be little raindrops. So I was trying to work out how to get the raindrops into this soap without it being labour intensive. I had a few hours spare the other day and I decided to do a little bit of a catch up on YouTube and I pulled up Moonfern Studio and as I was going through her videos she suddenly gave me the idea that I needed and I'll leave a link to her channel below if you're interested. She was attempting to do the mini drop swirl which was one of the soap challenge or one of the soap challenge club um, soaps from September 2018. She's actually done two videos where she does it and she was giving that a go to try and get the effect in her soap and it suddenly dawned on me this was going to be the best way to get raindrops in my soap. She also did leave links to another video to watch and I'll leave that down below. I know I'm going to pronounce this wrong but it is Holly from Kapira Mira and she does a really nice video showing how she actually does the mini drop swirl. So this is a new technique to me so I'm hoping that the soap batter behaves while I attempt it and I'm also going to attempt another new technique and we're going to do a little bit of basic soap sculpting as well. So let's go and get started. If you caught this week's behind the scenes video you would have seen that we made up these oils and lye solution for the, today's soap. Now because I make mine up at, at night time and I come in in the morning, I was sitting there overnight thinking, I really don't know how this oil behaves and I really want this soap to come together well for me. So rather than mixing all my oil and lye solution up in one go, I'm actually going to split it up and treat it as two separate batters, one for my base and one for my top. So I went back into Soap Calc and I had the 2.3 kilos worth of oils in this bucket and I've basically split that up to say I want 700 grams for the top and I want the 1.6 kilos for the base of my soap. I reprinted my recipe so I know exactly how much oil and lye I need to go and separate off. So that's what I'm going to go and do now. Okay, so I have now split these out. This is going to be the soap for my base and this is going to be the soap for the top. So I'm going to go and put this to one side and we'll work on the base first. For my base, I'm actually going to do a in the pot style of swirl of all blues to go in it and I am also going to be using a squeezy bottle to do my mini drop swirl. Now I've got this idea um, from off the Kapira mirror channel and again I do apologize if I'm pronouncing that wrong. She took her squeezy bottles and to make sure she got a long enough spout she took a pipette and she attached it onto the um, bottle with some electrical tape and then just snipped the end of the pipette so that gives us a nice long nozzle to actually stick down in the soap. When I pop my soap into this I do have another lid that I can put on so we can give it a shake to mix the colors up but you'll see that as we go along. Okay, so before I start mixing my lye water into my oils, because this fragrance oil, it is actually quite a soft scent, so I'm going to do something I don't usually do, and I'm actually going to add a little bit of kale and clay into this soap, because I've, I hear a lot of people saying that by adding clay into your soap, it can really anchor a fragrance into it, so I'm hoping by adding that kale and clay, it will really make this coconut rain fragrance oil pop. So I'm going to mix the clay in and come to a emulsion and then I'm going to split it out for the colours. Okay, so 
as you saw, I almost forgot to leave myself some batter to do my mini drop swirl, but I did remember at the last moment. I'm going to colour all of these pots here with some various shades of blue. We have got some mysterious mica. I am also going to add a little bit of blue yonder to this one. And for my final one, I am going to use some cerulean blue. And all of my micas come from my micro obsession. And I have got links below to her website. Okay, to my sauce bottle here, I have got some of the Nimbus Mica, which is blended up with some oil, just to make it nice and easy to disperse in there. I'm adding that in. I am going to grab the lid for this bottle, the one that doesn't have the um, extra nozzle bit. I'm going to just make sure my cap is on and I'm going to give that one a shake up. Now I'm not going to add any fragrance oil into that one because I don't want it to accelerate. But what I'm now going to do is mix these blues up and then stir in the fragrance and then create a swirl. I've got those mixed in and I've got my mess sorted up a little bit I'm actually gonna pour no I'm not <laughs> I've been having this problem a lot lately and what I'm actually thinking has happened is that I saw on my um, one of my oil supply pages that they had olive oil and it appeared from the price list that I had that they were going to be cheaper than buying it from the supermarket and it said it was pomace and I did some research into it found out that using the pomace oil wasn't really any different to using the classic olive oil which I was currently using and I decided All right, I'll go with it I was actually quite disappointed because when I got to the supplier um, they had increased their prices and already charged my card hadn't told me and I ended up paying more for this olive oil than I would have if I'd gone to the supermarket to get it what I have discovered since starting to use this pomace oil is that my soap batter is starting to actually set up before I even get fragrance oil into it. I've read that the pomace oil since actually has unsaponifiables in it which actually um, is, contributes to soap setting up really fast. So I've got a feeling that I'm having so much trouble with my soap batter because of this pomace oil. So even though I've got a couple more cans of it left down um, on the shelf, I'm thinking I'm going to have to find another way of using that or using it in soaps where it really doesn't matter if it thickens up. This one here I'm still going to attempt to do what we're doing. Um, hopefully having this really thick base um, we might actually get some really nice swirls from out of that squeezy bottle. Hopefully that hasn't set up in there. I'm going to keep getting these scraped out and plopped in here and then I'm going to pour it into my mould. We're going to get this grey, it has set up in the tube as well, but we'll just see what actually happens. I'm just going to shake it down. Oh, it is going to come out, so that's a good start. I'm just going to put my nozzle in and I'm going to squeeze quite hard and just run down the middle here. And I'm going to do another one. I will knock this down afterwards to try and knock out any of those air bubbles that it's making. Hopefully we're getting some really nice drops. I'm gonna go down a bit further. The idea is that this actually should be a lot more fluid than what we've got here, but I'm just working with what I've got right now. So I'm just gonna do that one quite low. I'm giving it a good hard squeeze just to try and get it to push down through the layers. Might come really low on this one. This is thickening up so much it's actually bending my nozzle here. So I don't think, oh, it's come off. Oh, the joys of soap making. All right, so I'll get rid of that and I'm gonna keep going 
this one just may not be as deep all the way through. It's looking all right, I think. I'm just going to give this a bit of a knockdown to hide up all those gaps. tried my hardest to beat this one down into submission I really don't know if this is going to work but I'm going to keep going with it because you never know sometimes you think you know all hope is lost and when you actually cut it open it's worked perfectly so let's move on to the next bit I have given that a really good knockdown on the ground to try and get that all those air bubbles out hopefully it's worked so the next thing I'm going to try and do is get this cloud in there by doing a little bit of soap sculpting. So what I did is I took an actual um, design, I actually made it into the size that this bar would be. I transferred the top of the cloud or the bottom of the cloud pattern, this is going to be the top of the soap, onto some cardboard which I've actually laminated as well just so it doesn't get all yucky. I'm going to sit it on the top of my soap and I am just going to drag this down and I think I know it is starting to work it's probably not quite as deep as what I was hoping for I'm going to pull this excess off what I'm going to do with the excess that I'm pulling off the top of this soap is I'm actually going to pop it in to one of these molds and it will become a little sample bar that will go out with orders what I'm going to do, because I originally was going to use this as a guide to rest it on the top, but it's not quite making it deep enough. I'm just going to chop the very ends of that off. I'm going to try again. And again, I'm just going to pull it evenly down my soap here. I think I have gone down far enough because I'm starting to pick up some of that grey and I don't want to lose all of the grey out of the the soap so I'm just gonna squish them into the mold there all right let's see if we can salvage this soap in any way I have the rest of my um, lye solution here and I already have my titanium dioxide in it I'm only doing the top of this white, so I'm actually going to pour my fragrance oil straight in here. This means I'm going to have minimal mixing, because the first thing I'm going to do is hopefully, while this is still fluid enough, is pour it into there so that we get some nice adhesion and some really nice cloud shapes. And then with the, whatever is left, I'm going to pop into a piping bag and finish piping the clouds on the top. So wish me luck. decided there wasn't enough um, soap batter left to do the piping I wanted to do and it did start to set up really fast now this could be a combination of the fact that I've got the olive pomace in here and the um, the fragrance oil I would have to actually make the soap again with normal with my usual sort of olive oil that I do to see which one was the main culprit. I have done a lot of reading about different fragrances and you tend to find that those sort of water-based um, fragrances do set up really quick. So that could be very easily be another contributing factor to this one. All right, I've got that as smooth as I'm going to make it, I think. Okay. I'm not going to put any spoon divots in it because clouds are generally quite roundish and um, don't really have those sort of peaky bits. If they do, they're quite wispy and I just don't think the spoon effect is really going to do it for it. So that is that one done. Now, because this one, I have got absolutely no hope on the middle of it. 
whenever anything just doesn't look pretty glitter can always fix it so the first thing I'm going to do is just spray some blizzard micro across the top and make it all pretty and shiny and then I have a little bit of some biodegradable glitter here and I'm just it's a thicker particle than what the mica is so I'm just going to spritz a little bit of that on the top as well and because this soap has given me a little bit of the grey blues here I'm just going to put a little bit of that grey on the top as well just to make it really pop and that's all right so there's not really much point bringing you down for a closer look because the top of it is pretty plain I am really hoping that the inside of this soap is going to be the showstopper but you know what even if it doesn't look as I want it to on the inside it is still going to be soap and someone may get themselves a bargain so I am going to leave this one sit overnight and we'll see what happens tomorrow all right, so I'm back this morning to cut open this coconut rain. I have got lots of little air pockets on the side of this soap. I have really got my fingers crossed that we have got some sort of design in the middle. But even if I don't, at the end of the day, it is still soap and it can still be used. And the added bonus is that fragrance, which is one of the things I was most worried about, has held. I'm going to cut this one a little bit differently today. I'm going to cut off some sample ends, mainly because I want to try and get... If I've got it in there, those sort of raindrops to actually show at both ends of the soap. So this will actually give me 16 bars instead of 17. Now I have actually left this sitting here for about 48 hours because I, I really wasn't wanting to cut it open. So let's go. It is a little bit harder than I usually cut it. But we're going through and keep going. And... All right, so let's take a look inside this bar and see what we got. Unfortunately, we haven't got any of the raindrops that I was hoping to get. You can see some of the little droplets in there, but they're not really as defined as what I was after. But I am really happy with how this in the pot swell has come together, even though that batter was so thick on me. I have got a few little air pockets in there, but that's going to be easily fixed as well, just by manipulating some of the soap just to fill in some of the holes. And some of the end pieces, I will use that as a bit of soap dough just to fill in these really big gaps. I'm really pleased to say that the actual cloud has formed really well out of that soap sculpting and the scent is really nice as well. So of the three things I was trying to attempt, at least two of them worked. So just grab another piece here. So you can still see some of the little droplets in there, but it's only really going to be me that gets to see it. That piece you can see a few more. We've got three little raindrops in there. But it will only really be me that sees that or anyone. If you guys have seen me make the video and you get um, purchase the soap, then you'll know that they're meant to be raindrops. But for those of them that are just purchasing from me at markets, they probably won't really see what I was trying to do. But oh well, I will certainly give that technique another go because there's a couple of other sort of fragrances I've had my eye on that I think that technique could work really well on. So as I said, I am quite happy that the shape of the cloud has come up. I'm really happy with how the colours are and I'm happy with how the scent is holding in this soap. So at the end of the day, it's not a complete washout of this one and it is still soap and can still be used. So I hope you have enjoyed watching all the drama that has gone into making this coconut rain soap. If you did, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. If you've got any questions, I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And until the next video, I hope you have a great week and I will catch you then. Bye.